Hi, this is Dominic Steele. I'm coming to you from the middle of Broad Street in Oxford, England, just standing next to the Martyr's Cross, marking the spot where Thomas Cranmer, Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley were burnt for their faith in 1555 and 1556. We've got a series out. It's called Ideas That Change the World. We're looking at the four big ideas of the Protestant Reformation, grace alone, Christ alone, Bible alone, and faith alone, and four leading thinkers of the Reformation, Martin Luther, John Calvin, William Tyndale, and Thomas Cranmer. It's ideas that change the world. It's a mixture of Bible study and video, and I do hope you'll join us. It is the pastor's heart. It's Dominic Steele and we're set for the biggest shake-up in the Anglican Church since the Reformation as the tectonic plates of world Anglicanism realign. How to reset the Anglican Communion. Our guest is the chair of the Global South Movement, the Archbishop of South Sudan, Justin Batty. The Church of England has departed from the historic faith passed down from the Apostles. That's what 12 of the primates of the Global South provinces say in a statement released this week. The primates, who are all national leaders within the Anglican denomination, say that the Church of England has disqualified herself from leading the Anglican Communion. They say that the Church of England has chosen to break communion with those provinces which remain faithful to the historic biblical faith. As to the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, well, the 12 Global South primates say he has led his House of Bishops to make recommendations that run contrary to the faith and order of the Orthodox provinces within the Communion. And so they are withdrawing their support for him. Instead, the Global South primates have committed to expeditiously meet, consult and work with other primates within GAFCON and other Orthodox groupings to reset the Anglican Communion. The chair of the Global South Movement, Archbishop Justin Badia Arama of South Sudan, is on the line. And uh, Archbishop, I'm imagining there was a stack of emotions swirling around in your pastor's heart as you and the other primates met online to write this statement? Yes, we were all concerned and uh, deeply grieved because the province which we all considered as the first province, as the mother church, who offered and made sacrificial efforts to spread the gospel around the world through the work of CMS has just decided to walk away from the biblical truth which their forefathers took around the world. It really grieves us and uh, we are sad about this and we continue to pray for repentance and the spirit of revival within the province of the Church of England. I imagine that you are particularly personally disappointed over Archbishop Justin Welby, who was in your country, South Sudan, uh, with the Pope just a few days before the English General Synod. Yes, my brother, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Pope and moderator, they came to South Sudan on a peace pilgrimage. So we dearly welcomed them because part of their coming to South Sudan was an invitation from the government of South Sudan. So we welcomed them and we stayed together well until they had to return back. So we did not talk about anything to deal with the church since they came on peace pilgrimage. The Archbishop of Canterbury, um, in the statement that you've just issued, you say that his position is untenable to continue to lead the Anglican Communion. Yes, we, after observing all the processes 
that has been going on until that time when the House of Bishops under his leadership took that decision, which is unbiblical, and passed it to the Synod for approval, we in the Global South have uh, seen that that is a, a great betrayal. We did not expect him to do this, to encourage or to lead the House of Bishops to do such an unbiblical decision, which is against the authentic doctrine of the church as was delivered to us by the forefathers. Therefore, if that is the way the leadership is, we no longer recognize him to lead the whole Anglican communion, which believes in the whole gospel and is committed to follow the biblical teaching in all aspects of the church discipline, church doctrine. So we see him as no longer the right person to lead us in that. We're talking about a very significant realignment within the Anglican Communion. Sure. The Church of England is central to the Anglican Communion, and we did not expect such to happen within the Church of England. I was particularly disappointed as I was watching the Church of England uh, debate online that there were so few clear voices for orthodoxy uh, from within the House of Bishops in the Church of England. Was that your reaction as you watched the debate as well? Actually, I was expecting many bishops to stand up and uh, speak the truth. But unfortunately, only very few who demonstrated their stand, their sacrifice for the truth, and all went astray, maybe to please the world, which is a very unfortunate situation uh, within the Church of I was just reflecting earlier about the uh, passage in Ezekiel uh, where the shepherd fails to give a warning about sin and then God particularly judges the shepherd. Um, do you think that that passage applies here? Sure. We are the watchmen in our time and that applies to us if we see sin and we don't uh, make the alarm, then we shall be responsible. As uh, uh, the book of Ezekiel says, we are the watchmen. We had to be alert to sign the warning, which Global South did. We issued several warnings to the Church of England not to go the way they are taken. So we did warn them, and uh, they have decided to do so. It is very unfortunate, and uh, God's implications in a way that is beyond human understanding may happen. We don't know, but ours is to call for repentance to everyone to come back to the truth. Just reflecting back to that meeting with the Global South Primates uh, over the last few days, Archbishop, what were some of the views and concerns that were expressed in that meeting, if you're able to share with us? There were different views and concerns, but uh, what I may mention, just uh, one or two, is that we were all saddened and grieved by the decision of our own mother church, which is actually the first amongst all the provinces, we were all saddened by their action of saying something different, that we are not changing our doctrine, and then actually doing something different, and publicly repenting, which is so sad. And the second thing in the discussion, we were all in agreement that the Church of England has disqualified herself from her position 
of leadership within the Anglican Communion. And in the same, their action also has disqualified their own Archbishop and Primate of all England as one of the first amongst equals. So those were what the Primates all uh, came to conclusion after several discussions and they came out with the resolution that if that is the case, we no longer recognize such leadership to continue within the Anglican communion. Have you received any communication back from Justin Welby uh, since the statement uh, was issued that you no longer have confidence in him as leader of the communion? Though I have not received a direct uh, communication from him, but I have so far seen two statements. One statement from the uh, Anglican Communion Secretary, and then another statement from his office, which I have seen. But I pray for him as my dear brother, that the Spirit of God will uh, convict him and will uh, help him to come out from all the pressures of those who are leading him astray so that he may come to the right path. A couple of questions have been submitted on Facebook. Uh, one question, uh, how might evangelical and orthodox parishes and clergy form links with the Global South, even if the official Anglican Communion links are broken? Actually, where evangelical and orthodox parishes are part of a diocesan link, associations, they can pull out and form themselves into a new Global South Fellowship of Anglicans, aligned grouping which can then relate to the Global South dioceses in places of the English dioceses. I would like to encourage every faithful Paris to be part of a group within its area that relates to the Global South province or a diocese. This could begin quite informally, and we need to remember that relationship of brothers and sisters in Christ are the foundation for a true communion and give the basis for more formal relationship in the future. That is our expectation to our brothers and sisters within the Church of England. You speak in your statement of collaborating with other Orthodox primates and the GAFCON leaders. Uh, what's your expectation of what's going to be happening over the next few weeks and months in that upper level of leadership in the Anglican Communion? To the wider communion, we will encourage all our brother primates and bishops to talk with their house of bishops and the parishes to inform and encourage them to take the right stand that we together come out, stand strong on biblical principles and to continue to raise the light of the gospel in our dark world. So it sounds like you're going to be setting up a meeting with them. That's the plan? We, at the moment, are giving out our position as Global South to all Orthodox primates. Those who are of the same mind can approach us and can unite so that we can together decide and suggest way forward to the Anglican Communion for our unity together as brothers and sisters in the Communion who have the same stand and who believe in the whole biblical truth. It is very sad, Archbishop, that we have come to this. It, it is a, such a sad and shameful situation that uh, the church ought to be the light of the world. But we have decided to follow the worldly values instead of uh, encouraging the world to come to light. But we have decided to join the darker part 
of the world, to please the world, to embrace the worldly uh, views and culture, which is a bit sad for the church. Archbishop, will you be going along to the big GAFCON conference in Kigali, Rwanda, in April? Yes, I will be there and several of my bishops will be there. We think this is a time we need to encourage ourselves with the word of God, and then we need to be in fellowship. Because as African, we use firewood. The more you don't bring the firewood together, the fire may go down. So we believe in such revival conference and the gatherings. That is what keeps the fire of the Holy Spirit burning. So we will be there. And therefore, I'm imagining that conference uh, in Kigali will actually give you and the many other primates there uh, a real opportunity for substantial talks uh, about the way forward. Well, sure. Since from yesterday and today, we have been receiving calls and uh, messages from different primates that we are with you, list uh, us on the uh, general list. So that is happening. And uh, during that conference, we will have to meet face to face uh, those who have decided so to join uh, and endorse the statement we have given so that together we see how can we now uh, move forward to help our communion, to reset our communion, and to help those who are faithful, but they find themselves in the revisionist provinces. So it will be a great opportunity for encouragement, for fellowship, and for planning the way ahead. So just to be clear, more primates have been in touch with you since you issued, you issued your statement asking for their names to be added to the list of signatories. Yes, we have received several primates who have requested that. Archbishop Justin, I'll look forward to meeting you in Kigali. I, I wonder if you would mind leading in prayer for a way forward for the Anglican Communion. Let's pray that God makes this possible, that we all meet to praise the Lord and to encourage each other together. Let's pray. God, our loving and heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for who you are to us and in our life. We thank you for the sacrificial effort of your son, Jesus Christ, who came to sacrifice his life in order to reconcile the world to you, our God. We pray, giving thanks for our communion, and we repent of our negligence and the way we have gone astray, neglecting your word, which is written in the Bible. I pray that you forgive us. I repent of my, on behalf of my brother bishops, priests, and those who have decided to invent ideas, doctrines, and prayers which are contrary to your truth. I pray in Jesus' name that you will revive your church. You will help those who have gone astray to come back to the truth. Pray for all bishops within the Anglican Communion. Pray for all Christians. Pray for the future of the Communion, that it will be reset in a way that glorifies your holy name. We thank you and pray your blessing upon all those who are dedicated to your truth that you bless them and you forgive those who have gone astray and may your blessing be upon your church. For this I pray in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Lord God, we also particularly pray for the Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Archbishop of York and the Bishop of London and all those other leaders in the British Church um, who need to repent. We pray for their repentance, that they might realise the, 
the error of their ways in leading your sheep astray, the error of not sounding the clear warning about sin that we see in the prophet Ezekiel. And we pray that they might repent, turn back to the scriptures, turn back to you, and we pray for the miracle that they might lead your people to faithful obedience in Jesus Christ. And we pray that in his powerful name. Amen. Amen. Archbishop uh, Justin Batty, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, thank you too. God bless you as you continue to raise the gospel, the gospel voice to the world. My guest on The Pastor's Heart, Archbishop Justin Batty of South Sudan, the uh, chair of the Global South Movement within World Anglicanism. Thanks for joining us on The Pastor's Heart. We'll look forward to your company next Tuesday afternoon. 